Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and the Galaxy S10 line of phones just came out and I got the Galaxy S10e to play around with and I've been using that phone and while using it, although I've had some gripes with it, there are some features that I would like to see Apple steal for their next line of iPhones. And that first feature that I think the next generation of iPhone should steal from the Galaxy S10 series is the wireless power share feature. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking with this feature, why would I ever want to charge another phone with my fully charged phone? I'm responsible, I charge my phone every night, I don't want my friends coming over and leeching off my precious phone battery, but I really don't think that's where wireless power share becomes a great feature. When it becomes a great feature is when you pair it with products like the AirPods or the Apple Watch. And we even see this with the S10 line. Sure, they demoed it charging a phone, but they also demoed it charging the Galaxy Watch and charging the Galaxy Buds. And yes, it might be a rare instance when your AirPods or your Apple Watch runs out of battery life, but having that feature there, having it so that your phone can charge your Apple Watch, can charge your AirPods if you ever run out of battery on those devices, only having to carry one charging cable with you on a trip and then having the AirPods and Apple Watch charge off your phone while you're charging it with the cable, that would be a really good benefit for iPhone users. And I really do wanna see Apple bring the wireless PowerShare feature over to the next iPhones. And we've actually heard some rumors that they are working on bringing that feature to the 2019 iPhones. So hopefully in the fall, we do get the wireless PowerShare feature. Okay, the next thing I would like to see the iPhones copy this year from the Galaxy S10e and the S10 line of phones is by adding in an ultra wide angle lens to the iPhones. One of my favorite things about using the Galaxy S10e, for instance, is the fact that it does have a two lens camera setup where the iPhone XR only has a single lens. And I'm really enjoying the wide angle field of view that I'm getting from that phone. With the S10 and S10 Plus, it goes even further by adding up to three lenses. So you get your normal lens, your wide angle lens, and then of course your telephoto lens. Having that wide field of view can be just as important sometimes than having a zoom lens where you're really close to a subject or if you're in a room, you wanna capture the widest possible field of view. Sometimes that's just not possible on the normal lens on the iPhone XS or iPhone XR. So I would really like to see Apple include a wide angle lens on all of the iPhones this year. And we are getting some rumors that Apple will be including a third lens on the iPhone 11 Max Hopefully that carries over to all of the iPhone line. And we've even heard rumors that the iPhone 11R will be getting a second camera. That will probably be a zoom lens as opposed to a wide angle lens. So I'm hoping that even though the 10R isn't slated to get a wide angle lens, hopefully we get it on the iPhone 11. And while we're talking about wider angle lenses, let's talk about the wide angle lens on the front of the Galaxy S10. So with the Galaxy S10, you're able to capture a much wider field of view from that front facing camera. And that's an important feature, especially when we're taking our group selfies, when we're trying to fit in as many people as possible into our group photos, that's something that the current line of iPhone struggles with. So I would also like to see Apple add a wider angle field of view to the front facing camera on the iPhone 11. I find there's a lot of practical benefits for adding in these wider angle lenses to both the front and back of the next generations of iPhone. And let's just keep going with this camera stuff. One of the other features I would like to see the iPhone steal from the Galaxy S10 line of phones is this live focus feature. So we all know that the iPhone XS and iPhone XS Max have a portrait mode that can take a portrait mode of objects. I honestly think that the XS and XS Max does a better job of portrait mode than the Galaxy S10e that I'm using. However, the Galaxy S10e has a live focus mode that the iPhone XR doesn't have when taking portrait shots. And while I do like the portrait mode on the iPhone XR for people, you can't use it 
with objects or with pets, but you can take portrait modes of objects and pets by using the rear camera on the Galaxy S10e with this live focus mode. You even get some cool options that the iPhone XS doesn't have where you can add some different styles of effects that the iPhone XS doesn't have. I would really like to see this kind of implemented into the current portrait mode on the iPhone XS and especially on the iPhone XR so we can take portrait mode objects of objects and pets. Okay, and this is the last camera feature I promise that Apple should steal for the iPhones from the Galaxy S10, and that is the video stabilization performance that is currently in these Galaxy phones. So I've been messing around with the Galaxy S10e camera, and I gotta say, when moving around the camera at a really fast pace, it does a really great job with the inbuilt video stabilization. I don't know what sort of hardware or software that Samsung is using to achieve this level of video stabilization in this line of phone, but I would really like to see Apple kind of take this technology and incorporate it into the next generation of iPhones because it does a really great job, especially when you're moving really quickly at stabilizing the video in the Galaxy S10e. Okay, and the next feature I would like to see Apple steal from the Galaxy line of phones is just the fact that these Galaxy phones come with bigger batteries than the iPhones. Now don't get me wrong, the battery life on the iPhones isn't bad per se, especially on the iPhone XR. It is known to have a really good battery, but imagine the performance of battery that Apple could get if they incorporated these bigger battery designs into the next generations of iPhones. Apple has always done a really good job of having a smaller battery in the line of iPhones, but still managing to eke out a lot of software optimization to make those batteries last longer. But now that Samsung has come out with these Galaxy S10 phones and they have these big batteries in them while still maintaining a slim design and a lightweight design, I don't see any reason why the next generation of iPhones shouldn't have bigger batteries inside of them. Can you imagine a 10R with an even bigger battery, an iPhone 10s and 10s Max with even bigger batteries? The battery life performance with iOS running, with the hardware and software optimization that Apple can achieve with its iPhones would create some really long lasting phones with really long lasting battery life inside of them. I just feel like the iPhone XR would last for like three days with a bigger battery inside of it. Okay, the next thing I think that Apple should steal from the Galaxy S10e is the USB-C port. I know, I know, this is probably not an unpopular opinion. People have been asking for USB-C iPhones for years, and I've actually been on record saying that I don't mind the lightning port inside of my iPhone. I actually think it is a better charging port compared to USB-C. I find USB-C to be a little bit stiff, but that being said, I find that I'm having more and more and more USB-C devices in my life, including my MacBook Pro, including my iPad, and even my camera now has a USB-C port. And by making the iPhone jump to USB-C, it would make it easier for people working with an iPad Pro, working with a MacBook Pro to just carry around that one cable to charge all of their Apple devices. So I really think that would be a benefit to people living in the Apple ecosystem. And I really think now is the time to switch to the USB-C standard on iPhones. Okay, and the last feature I would like to see Apple steal from the Galaxy S10 line of phones is the night mode. So Samsung calls this night mode, you could also call it dark mode, but if you swipe down on the settings, for the Galaxy S10e, there is an option to toggle on night mode. With night mode activated, all of a sudden your notification center turns from white to black. Also, if you go into the settings menu, that as well changes from a light theme to a dark theme. And even the keyboard changes from a white light background to this nice dark black keyboard. And it's kind of this baby dark mode. Not all the apps are instantly going to switch to a dark mode, but you do have the settings pane, you do have the notification, and you do have this keyboard converting to a dark mode. So I would really like to see iOS 13 on the next generation of iPhones kind of use a dark mode. And we have heard rumors for quite some time now that there was going to be a dark mode on iOS 12, but it was kind of pushed into iOS 13 
So iOS 12 could focus more on bug and performance fixes. So hopefully in a few months when iOS 13 is announced, a night mode or dark mode is announced alongside of it. Okay, everyone, and those are my wish list features that Apple will steal from the Galaxy S10 lines of phones. So let me know what you think. Do you agree with me that Apple should take these features and incorporate them into the next iPhone? What features would you like to see Apple take from the Galaxy S10 line of phones? Or more importantly, what features would you like to see Apple incorporate from Android? If you guys want to support the channel anyway, make sure you check out the links in the description. If you want to join the Greg's Gadgets Discord, there will also be a link there as well. If you like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.